Jesse again for Kidopolis. Uh, I, I feel like we should come up with a formal name for Kidopolis from my kitchen table. Maybe that's what it can be, Kidopolis from Miss Jessie's kitchen table. Who knows, we'll see. But we're here again. This is the fourth week of September. We are doing a block party. Um, that's our theme for the month where everyone's invited, right? We wanna include everyone in this heavenly kingdom that God has prepared for us and is just waiting for us to come join him eventually. But there's some work we have to do to get there. So that's, that's what we're doing now, we're doing the work. <clears throat> So the bottom line for this month, um, or for this week rather, is that friends forgive one another. And I have to ask for your forgiveness on something that I'm so embarrassed about. Okay, so <laughs> it's really silly and it's probably not that big of a deal, but I want to apologize for telling you something incorrect. We have talked about, and I'll talk about it later, our memory verse comes from a version of the Bible that is capital N, capital I, little r, capital V, right? Um, and we talk about how important it is to like have different versions of the Bible to read um, for different seasons in life or just even the same season where maybe you're not connecting with the word in the way that you think you should be. Um, and that's why there's different versions. And I said this capital N, capital I, little r, capital V is a new international revised version. And I have no idea where I got that from. I thought that's what it was. I made it up in my head or something. It is actually the new international readers version. And I don't think that's too terribly important what that little r stands for. But I think I looked it up just to make sure because I wanted to apologize for telling you the wrong thing. Um, and I did some like more official research um, on like the structure of the Bible and a little bit about how it's translated just to share with you guys because I know I knew some of these things before um, I read my Bible and I know different versions are different, translated different ways. Um, but I have some words and definitions to share with you guys. Okay, so the capital N, capital I, little rv, the reader's version is based off of the capital N, capital I, capital V, the new international version. That's what Miss Jessie has for her home Bible. Um, and it's the one I use the most, but it's not the only one I use. So this NIV Bible is kind of the, uh, the base, the home base for the new international readers version, which they changed the language for early readers, um, maybe people who have a hard time comprehending like larger words, and then also for like new English speakers. It's just an easier version of the NIV. And the NIV was published, the whole thing was published um, in totality in seven, 1978. So 10 years before Miss Jessie was born. Um, and five years before that, I think just the New Testament was published, or maybe it was just the Old Testament. I'm not sure. I should have written that down, but one of them, so they released it separately. But 1978, this version of the Bible came out. And then um, let's do some math. 18 years later, in 1996, was when the reader's version came out. And the NIV is a great, simple version of the Bible to read. But the NIRV is even a little bit better, especially for teaching kiddos. There's some words in here that are like, oh, I don't, I already read my Bible. You're going to make me pull the dictionary down too. I can't carry both of those around. Um, so yeah, the NI, little RV, reader's version, not revised. Um, so <clears throat> I tell you all this because I think it's really cool how the Bible is translated. When it was first written down, it was not written in English in English, and in the version that we see here. I mean, my Bible has red words where Jesus spoke. The red words are the coolest ones. They're the ones that Jesus said. Is that how it goes? Anyways, um, there were no big numbers and little numbers. Probably not. I haven't seen an original text. But, you know, it was in Greek and in Hebrew mostly. So they had to translate it to English because I don't read Greek or Hebrew. Like... I can't even, I have a hard time deciding what to order at like a Greek restaurant and I always want to call the Saganaki Opa, but it's flaming cheese and if I say Opa, they look at me a little silly. That's okay though. It's really good if you haven't tried it, you should. But I definitely don't read Greek. It's Greek to me. So that's why we have these English Bibles. And the NIV, the N-I-R-V, is what they call 
let me get this right, a dynamic or functional equivalence. And with that, the, the words in here and the things that you're reading, they were translated from Greek and Hebrew based on the thought or like the, the idea that the, the original writers were trying to get by. This is opposed to where you have a literal or a formal equivalence, and that is where they translated things word for word. So um, there's, you know, this group of Bible, Bibles over here that like that they take one sentence and they say, what is this sentence trying to say? And then they write it down. And then they have that, there's another group over here. These are the literal equivalents, the formal equivalents. They see this sentence and they say, okay, well, I need to translate the first word to this word, the second word to this word, the third word to this word. So it ends up being a little bit different, but for the most part, they're the same, which is pretty cool. If you look at your Bibles, like I said before, there's always a little bit different um, between the versions, but for the most part, you're seeing the same thing. So that's, again, another reason that it's so important. It is so important to be able to know about these different versions of the Bible and be comfortable with, like, don't, you don't need to be faithful to just one kind of Bible. You can open up different versions to get different meanings out of them. Um, and hopefully that helps to know why there's different versions, why we see different types of Bibles when it's all God's word. But the people who wrote these Bibles and the people who published them, for the most part, we have NLT, the Contemporary English Version, the Good News Translation. I think those are all Bibles that I've had physical copies of. Those are all the dynamic slash functional equivalents. So those are the thought for thought. And then we have the ESV, the King James Version, the New King James Version, um, the New American something. I just wrote new American. Those are the word for words. So, um, you know, when people are flawed, right? We are, we, the people who translated these Bibles and published them, their main goal is to get you close to Jesus and live like him and to bring people into our faith, right? They're doing it with the best of hearts. Um, but because we're people sometimes, you know, there might be a little bit of discrepancy. So, if you feel like there's discrepancy or something that you're not totally getting, pick up a different version and maybe even pick up a different version translated a different way. Whew. Okay. I'm going to take a break before I tell you the Bible story, but I hope that helped. And I'm begging for forgiveness for telling you the wrong thing. And please don't make fun of me. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Okay. One second. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't a long enough break. Okay, so now we're going to talk about a story in the Bible with Jesus and Peter. And this is, of course, in the New Testament because we have Jesus playing a key role, right? And he's named. So probably the New Testament. Where we're getting it from mostly is the book of John, which, as you know, is a gospel. Gospel. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> so this story, what we're talking about, the, the theme that we're trying to get across is that friends forgive one another. And going back to our whole theme um, is use your words and actions to show others that you care. So I keep those two um, ideas in mind as I'm telling you this story um, about Jesus and Peter. Okay, so if you have a close friend or even somebody in your family, somebody that you're close to, doesn't even really have to be somebody you're close to, just somebody that you know. Um, there's lots of opportunities for you to get hurt, right? And especially when you're around people a lot, if you're working with them, if you live with them. Sometimes we say things that we don't quite mean. Um, sometimes we misinterpret interpret something somebody said. There's so many opportunities for people to get hurt. So do we just decide to go live in a box with no interaction with other people because like we can't be perfect? No way, Jose! We don't do that. We need to make sure that we are open to forgiveness and open to letting other people kind of... Hmm, for, well, obviously we're open to other people forgiving us, but we need to be open to people telling us that they've been hurt or um, that what they need in order to move on, okay? So, also keep that in mind. So, Peter was a follower of Jesus. And in those last days of Jesus, when he was doing his ministry, like think about all the work that Jesus and his disciples were doing. They were busy bees, right? And they were doing some really intense work. They were telling people about the real message of God and the real message of Jesus and how 
things should be that contradicted a lot of the things that went against many of the things that people knew or thought to be true at the time. That can probably get really intense and really frustrating. The more stressed that you feel, the more likely you are to hurt the ones around you. It's an unfortunate truth about being a human. So all of this was going on already. And then Jesus was tried and then killed on the cross, right? But before that, um, Peter promised Jesus. He said, dude, I will follow. He didn't say dude. I will follow you anywhere. I'm doing a dynamic equivalence right now. If you, if you remember the dude, I will follow you anywhere. Okay. And Jesus is like, great. My handwriting's messy. I'm trying to read my summary. Okay. He said, dude, I'll follow you anywhere. And he said, um, I'll give my life for you. Not only will I follow you, I'll give my life for you. And Jesus is like, awesome. Okay, cool. Um, so obviously we know what happens in this story. I already told you, but also you, if you're watching this Kidopolis video, it's probably not your first Kidopolis lesson. And you know that Jesus was tried and died on the cross. He died for our sins, but that's not what the people who put him up there said they were, he was dying for. Um, he died. And when that happened, Peter got really, really scared, like super scared, and told three separate people that he didn't even know Jesus. Gosh, that's not good. Anyways, so when, if you also been in Kidopolis or read your Bible, you also know that after Jesus died, what happened after three days, he rose again. And when he rose again, he went and he decided to go talk to his friends, right? So can you imagine how Peter was feeling at this time? He probably believed that Jesus was coming back because he really truly believed in his mission and his word. Um, hopefully, <laughs> but so he was waiting for him to come back, but he also knew he also knew that he messed up. So it was probably like this combination of like excitement and joy because Jesus is back and oh, a relief because like, okay, good, he's back. And like, if there was any doubt, maybe it's going to be recovered, but also like really worried and anxious because his really good buddy, the Lord, <laughs> he denied him. He said, he told three people he didn't know him. So just imagine like how mixed his emotions are. Okay. Now we're going to fast forward a little bit again. Peter was out on a boat and he was fishing with his buddies and he was having bad luck. There was no fish. And um, after a while, these guys in the boat, they looked over the shore and they saw this guy standing there. And dude's like, hey, you catching anything? And they're like, nope, not a bite. Again, this is not the word for word translation. Um, and Jesus said, all right, dudes. Why don't you throw your nets to the right side of the boat and see what happens? And they're like, hmm. all right. So they decided to give it a shot and guess what happened? The net became so full, so full that they could not even pull it in to their boat. They couldn't even pull it in. So then Peter, he looks over at the shore. Wait, my shore was over there, sorry. Looks over at the shore and he realizes it's Jesus. So he runs out there into the water, gets all wet, and like they have this beautiful reunion. One second. Sorry, this is a long story. <laughs> so it's okay to have a little bit of a break, right? So now that we're back from our intermission, Peter, that when we left off, Peter had just run into the water to greet Jesus. And Jesus saw him, all the other guys in the boat, some of them came and ran out and like some of them had to like tug the boat or something. I'm not sure exactly how it worked out, but it's in here. Um, so then Jesus is like, hey, get your fish. Let's go have some breakfast. So they had a breakfast with fish and bread, which isn't my idea of a good breakfast, but I bet you it was theirs. And then we find out that Jesus set aside some time because he wanted to speak to Peter. Now just imagine if you were at this breakfast and you hugged Jesus, you saw him on the shore, he gave you and your buddies fish, 
you ran out and you saw him and you hugged him and it was a beautiful thing and then you sat down and you had breakfast together and you might be thinking like, okay, the awkward part's behind us. And then Jesus is like, hey, Peter, can, I, can, can, can you come to my office for a minute? Like, I don't know if you guys have cell phones or anything like that and emojis. Like, you know the emoji with, like, the really big eyes that are like this and, like, the red? Like, that's probably what Peter's face was like. He went... So, <clears throat> at that point, and let's just say we're John 21, 15, okay? When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, because he was also called Simon, the whole thing, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? And he said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. And then the third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt. Because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you're old, you will stretch out your hand and someone will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. So this is kind of weird, right? Because, like, I don't remember the part of the story when Jesus was on the shore and the guys are fishing, if there was any, like, sheep or lambs or things like that, but apparently there were. No, no, no. What he's talking about here is Jesus is often compared to a shepherd. The people of the church are his flock, and he leads them into, you know, a healthy life, a good life, and safety. And in this, Jesus is telling Peter that's what he wants him to do, which clearly shows a ton of forgiveness because you know how much Jesus loves us and you know how much Jesus loves the people who choose to follow him, who follow, and Jesus loves everybody. But, and he's saying to Peter, go ahead, you feed them, you lead them. So all of that to say, Closing this for now. Um, let me look at my notes. In this story, we had Peter, who pretty much wronged Jesus three times, and then Jesus three times asked if he loved him. I don't think, and again, it's not in our Bible, but maybe it happened in real life. There was never a time where Peter went up to Jesus and he was like, I am so sorry. Will you forgive me? Which is a great thing to do, right? When you know that you've done wrong, which you know that Peter knew he did wrong. It's a great thing to apologize. But sometimes the person that you need to forgive doesn't always ask for it. And Jesus handed it to him. He gave it to him lovingly and freely. Okay? So I want you to think about that. That sometimes there's people that we need to forgive and it can be really frustrating when they don't ask for it. It feels like if they don't say the words that they don't deserve it. But that's not true. Jesus is a great example for forgiveness. And especially in this story for people who don't ask for it. Make sure you forgive them and let them know. Let them know that you forgive them and you love them. Um, also, even though Peter was really probably scared. Again, that emoji. Like um like he still faced Jesus and he still faced his problems his you know it's it's hard to kind of say that Jesus is a problem but the interaction with Jesus after he was embarrassed and scared and ashamed of what he did he like that that interaction seems like a problem but he still owned up to it he still faced it and in the end it ended up being a beautiful thing because Peter glorified God's in amazing glorified God in amazing ways so you have homework this week, okay? Is there anyone in your life that you need to forgive? And I want you to think really, really hard about it because like I said, people don't always ask for forgiveness. They don't always ask you to forgive them. So it might not be obvious at first 
who you need to forgive. But I bet you there's probably somebody in your life that when you think about them, there's a little dark, dark spot on your heart that needs to be polished up. So think about that. Also, I want you to think about where you're the Peter in life. Is there anyone that you've done wrong and who is a lovely person? Um, maybe not, maybe they're not a lovely person, but is there anybody that you've done wrong that you need to kind of face and talk to? And go ahead and ask for forgiveness. You can go ahead and, and start a conversation with them. And maybe the icebreaker is, I am so sorry for what I did. Will you forgive me? So think about the places in your life right now. Think of one of each because I'm sure you can. I know I can. Can you? Can you take up? Think of, yeah, he's, he's nodding his head yes. Um, where there's someone you need to forgive and there's someone that you need to be forgiven by. So think about that. Okay, so we've done my apology <laughs> and hopefully hopefully you've forgiven me, right? So I've already done half of my homework. Um, we've done our story about Peter. It was long. We had an intermission. It was a whole thing. Now you're going to watch the so-and-so show and then we're going to meet right back here. We're going to do memory verse. We're going to do prayer and we're going to say peace out. But not yet, not yet. Go watch the so-and-so show. We'll be right back. 17, 18, 19, oh. 20. Oh. All right. Oh. There you go. Pin the tail on that donkey. Which way is it? It's right in front of you. Where? Oh, yeah, I, don't you know. you I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to be able to do this. Love this game. <laughs> oh. Hello? No, no, I can talk. Oh, that just means Goldie is stressed. Yeah, you got you to take him out of the fishbowl. Yeah, no, I, I do it all the time. You just take him out with your hand and hold him in your hand. Then you want to kind of rub his side. Like, go, go with the scales. Give him a little rub. Is that working? Okay, well, uh, look into his eye and uh, do some, like, breathing exercises. You want to try that? Fine. Can you just put Goldie on the phone? Just put the phone by Goldie. Let me talk to him. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. How you doing? You a little stressed? Let's, let's do some breathing like we do, okay? Here we go. Ready? Breathe in. Breathe out. Good. Okay, one more. Ready? Breathe in. Breathe out. Party people, welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and it's time to play Ultimate Block Party Warrior. Hello, sports fans, and welcome to Ultimate Block Party Warrior. I'm Mickey Hutch, and here with me is the legend himself, retired wrestling great Harvey the Brick Brickowski. Hey, you brought the party, Mick. I brought the warrior. Smackdown! <laughs> Uh, today we have Brandon and John going head-to-head -head in a winner-take-all race inspired by some of our favorite neighborhood block party games. First contestant to complete each of the seven stations will be considered the ultimate block party warrior. Hey, let's get out to the course and show our folks at home what our contestants are up against. Station number one is the Super Soaker String Race. Use the Super Soaker to get your cup from one end of the string to the other. Station number two. Cornhole on the cob. No bean bags here. Station number three, soccer ball bowling. Number four, carrot dog crunch. Have a healthy snack in the middle of racing by gnawing on a delicious carrot dog. Mm. Station number five, the 15 foot mini trike run. Station number six, blindfold bobbing for icebergs. Real icebergs. No, no, lettuce. <laughs> And the final station, station number seven, the paper sack race. What do you say, Brick? Are you ready for this? I was born ready, Mick. Let's do this. And there they go. Boy, these two guys look like they're in great shape for old people. All right, here we are. And now we've got 
The uh, station number one, the Silly String Soaker. It looks like uh, John is having trouble. Uh, he can't seem to... Oh, Brandon is moving quickly. Yeah, the, the approach difference is John is losing. Cornhole on the cob. Boy, John is my, finally catching up. Mm-hmm. And Brandon and John are neck and neck. Oh, at the, oh and Brandon did has you see that? I did. Oh, oh boy, Br- John is stuck. He has the the throw of a of a of a lemur. Let's cut to Brandon. His uh, soccer skills are lacking. I would say it's probably because he doesn't like soccer very much. Oh, uh, what a what a pity! Oh, look, and John's back up here, and with his first kick, he knocks three pins down. He is he's taking the lead. I've never seen a more pathetic display of soccer skills than watching Brandon perform here today. Boy, you could say that twice, or maybe even three no. times. I've never seen such a pathetic display of soccer skills than Brandon performing here today, and it's still and right on cue. John is finished. He's moving on to the carrot dog. Oh boy, it's fully loaded. That's right. He's put the carrot dog in the bun. Now he's got to put some chili on there, some relish, some onions, and top it off with a little mustard and ketchup and some spray cheese. Mm. Boy, boy, doesn't that just make your mouth water? It makes my mouth do something. All right. Jeez. Oh, and Brandon finished his soccer pins. I'm not sure he uh, actually did it uh, to regulation, but... We're, we're just going to pretend he did. Absolutely. Boy, this is a struggle right here. It looks like John's never eaten healthy in his life. And it looks like he forgot the spray cheese, and he just put a mountain of it on top. Boy, I don't know if there's going to be any uh, uh, you know, penalty for that. Oh, looks like Brandon was a little tired out. He's going to have a seat. I don't know if that's in the rules or not. Oh, it looks like he's pulling out a knife and fork. Huh? I'm not sure there are any rules in this game. <laughs> I'm, I've never heard of it before until today. He secretly finished that carrot dog. So, oh, he swallowed it. Yes, I don't know how that happened. He's going to move on to station number five, the 15-foot mini trike run. This is a tricky one. Oh, but he's maneuvering that wheel with expertise. He's moving on to the iceberg. Bob, I don't know why we call it Iceberg Bob. There's still no ice in there, Mick. I don't understand. Yeah, there's no way Brandon will be able to uh, catch up to John's skill. Oh, it looks like John has figured out a new technique here. He's going, he's pushing the head of lettuce to the bottom of the bucket with his face. (laughs) Oh, he's he's in there. He's in there. Whoa, he's completely submerged. He got it. John is moving on to the final station while Brandon is still struggling to get the iceberg lettuce into his mouth. This looks like a clear win for... Oh, he ripped the bag. He's going to have to start over again. If Brandon comes back to win this, I'll eat my own sandal. John is definitely going to win. Oh! He's ripped the bag. That means he has to start over again. I know. So much to recycle. Brandon is now definitely in the lead. He is moving sort of slowly, and uh, John uh-oh. could come back if he hurries up uh-oh. at this pace. Oh, uh-oh. John is ripped. It looks like it's almost it over. It's all the way over. Brandon has crossed the finish line and won this race. And John is a bitter, bitter man. Look at that. Oh, and John's running over to the... Uh, He's still running. It's over, John. Yeah, that's right. Brandon is celebrating, uh, and not, you know, in a gregarious way. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! This is ugly. You hate to see this in sport. Block party foul. That's correct. Uh, somebody's got to step in and stop this. Where's the ref? Oh, oh, John just picked up a buttery cob of corn and threw it right at Brandon. This is, this is ugly. This is, you don't want to see this between friends. Yeah, we should stop watching this. Yeah, but I can't stop watching. Me neither. Yeah. There's nothing like watching two people who are out of shape fight. That's all the time we have today on Ultimate Block Party Warrior. Tell them what's up next, Brick. Sure, Mick. It's Bubble Story Time with Gillen. Oh, yeah. Hey, fellas. Whoa. Um, what is going on? Why did you soak me? You cheated. I did not. I was just playing you a game your like carrot dog with a fork. So what? There's the, nothing in the rules the, that says the, nothing in the rules. Is it? Okay, okay, now okay. you're just being. Ah! Okay, 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 okay. Um, who is up for a story? Sure, Kellen. Sure. 
Not sure any story can repair the damage here, though. Not sure any story can repair the damage here. I'll see what I can do. After Jesus had died and come back to life, his disciples went out for an overnight fishing trip. But by morning, they hadn't caught a single fish. Did someone say fish? I did, but I don't don't think this is really... My name is Florence. I'm a fish. And let me tell you a story. This one time, I saw a fella jump into the Sea of Galilee after 153 of my friends were pulled onto a boat by a handful of ragtag fishermen. That's actually the story I'm telling, but... Oh, how convenient. I'll help you tell it. Okay, okay, fine. But just to be clear, there were no talking fish in the Bible or anywhere. What's that? Uh, no, <clears throat> nothing, nothing. Uh, just tell us your story, Florence. All right, so there I was, swimming around in the Sea of Galilee like I do most nights. Or at least, I think I do. I'm a fish. I got a really short-term memory. What was I talking about? Hopefully something about fishermen. Right. There were these fishermen in a boat up there, and they'd been trying all night to catch me and my friends, and we were like, no thanks. Okay, but what happened the next morning? Well, I heard this loud voice calling from shore. It said, friends, don't you have any fish? So I popped out of the water to get a better look. I saw this guy. He built a fire on the beach. And then he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat. Yes, the man on the beach was Jesus. He had just come back from the dead a short time ago. No kidding. Well, I don't know much about that. But I do know that when those fishermen threw their net on the right side of the boat, something happened. My friends started swimming up from all over the place. They were drawn to that net like a moth to a flame. I was there too, right in the middle of it all. Those fishermen caught so many of us, they couldn't even pull the net into the boat. So you were one of the fish that got caught? Yeah, I was right there on the top of the fish pile. I was gasping for water, and I hear this one guy yell, It's the Lord! Talking about this Jesus guy on the beach. Then this other guy puts his coat on and jumps in the water. Now, why you need your coat to take a dip, I don't know. I've been swimming without a coat as long as I can remember. The guy you're talking about, his name is Peter. When he saw Jesus on the shore, he decided to swim to his friend as fast as he could. Yeah, he beat us to shore, all right. The boat could barely move, dragging a net full of fish behind it. As we got closer, I heard Jesus say, bring some of the fish you've just caught. That's when I decided to get out of there, but 153 of my friends weren't so lucky. Oh, wow. Hmm. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'm a fish. You get used to it. Um, yeah, of course you do. So Jesus and the fishermen, his disciples, had, um, breakfast on the beach. Yeah, and after they ate, Jesus and that Peter guy started talking, but I didn't understand what they were talking about. Perhaps I can help with that. Oh boy, a talking rooster. Name's Chuck, Chuck the rooster. And I was with Peter the day Jesus died. Okay, we're doing this, but again, just to be clear, no talking roosters have ever existed. Ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Kellen, I get it. I'm a storytelling device. Can I tell my part of the story now? Why not? Okay. So on the night Jesus was arrested... Wait, Jesus was arrested? Yeah, Jesus was arrested. Where you been the last month? Underwater? I'm a fish, Chuck. Valid. Jesus was arrested. And then I see Peter hanging around when this one gal is like, you are one of Jesus' disciples, are you? And Peter was like, I am not. Oh, that's cold. Yeah. But then someone else says to Peter, you, yeah, you, aren't you one of them? And Peter again is like, nope. Methinks he doth protest too much. Sure. Yeah, whatever. Then a third time, someone is like, I literally saw you with Jesus. And Peter yells, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, it was too much. I crowed at the top of my lungs. I thought they were supposed to be friends. I know, but Peter was scared. So he denied knowing Jesus three times. Oh, 
It all makes so much sense now. On the beach after breakfast, Jesus says to Peter, do you love me? And Peter's like, yeah, you know I do. Jesus asked him three times. That's how many times Peter said he didn't know who Jesus was, right? That's right. And Jesus said some other things to Peter too, didn't he? Probably. It was hard to catch the whole conversation just popping my head out of the water over and over. Plus, I'm a fish, so, you know, short-term memory. Okay, I'll take it from here. Jesus asked Peter three times if he loved him. And three times, Peter said, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus responded each time, Feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. Even after Peter denied knowing Jesus, Jesus forgave Peter and trusted Peter to take care of his followers. And later, Peter would go on to be the leader of the early church. And that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for your help, Florence and Chuck. You bet. I'm happy to help. Now, if you excuse me, I have to get up early tomorrow. That's a rooster joke. Okay, bye. What you think, fellas? That was a really great story, Kellen. Yeah. I love how Peter couldn't wait to get to Jesus. He literally just jumped in the water. Didn't matter that he got wet. And I love how Jesus forgave Peter. That, that must have been hard. I'm sure it was hard. It had to hurt Jesus to know what Peter did. But Jesus' love for Peter was incredible. It's the same love that God has for us. So when we mess up, God forgives us again and again and again because he wants us to know how loved we are and he wants us to learn to love others the same way he loves us. Thanks, Kellen. You got it. I'll see you guys next time. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. No, no, no I, I didn't. I'm, you you first. go first. <sighs> okay, look, I sh shouldn't have gotten mad at you when you sprayed me with the super soaker. I just... It hurt my feelings, and I, I just wanted to hurt you back, but I never, never should have acted that way. Well, and I, I really overreacted when you won. I, I wanted to win so bad that I let it get in the way of our friendship. And... Oh, man. Forgiveness feels good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> hey, reveal the question. How do you react? when a friend hurts you. Oh, there are a lot of ways you could react. Yeah, you should. You could give them the cold shoulder. You can yell at them! Or you could spray them with a super soaker. Don't, 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 I'm, 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 <laughs> Talk about <laughs> it with each other. How do you react when a friend hurts you? Yeah, and we'll see you next time on the So and So Show. That's right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Anything goes with a carrot, dog. <laughs> I'll take a bye. How do you like it? Man, that's awful. Hmm. I like the onions, especially. No. 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 I can't believe I signed a contract to sell these things. It's a carrot and a hot dog bun. Hmm? Put... Again, um, so we're doing our memory verse, and um, some months I break it up into like we have our varsity kids who are a little bit older, first grade and up, who um, can maybe do a little longer memory verses, maybe a little tougher words, um, and then we also have our junior varsity that's kindergarten and below, or wherever you see yourself fit, you decide. But this month we'll have one memory verse one um and it's a great opportunity i've talked about it before to show you some of the difference in, in the different versions of the bible and now that we know the difference between the niv and the nirv the new international it's actually like this the new international version and the new international readers version um it'll be really cool to see the differences okay Quick reminder, the New International Version is translated thought for thought. So you get like the basic idea of the, not the basic idea, but the idea of the sentence. 
and then you get the sentence. So idea of the sentence in Hebrew, we turn it into English, okay? Um, and that's how the NIV was translated. Then we have the NIRV, which takes that translation, which is already considered a very readable and accessible um, translation, one that is that most people can understand. It's not super duper fancy dancy. Um, it's beautiful, but not fancy dancy. Um, the NIRV takes that version and it says, okay, let's make it even a little bit easier, easier. Maybe for school age kids, maybe for people who have a hard time reading, maybe for people who just learned English. Okay. And that's what the reader's version is. So this is the, the, the NIV. This is not your memory verse per se. It's a different translation. <clears throat> Proverbs 17, 17, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. That's Proverbs 17, 17 in the NIV. Now we're going to go to the NIV. A friend loves at all times. Sounds good. They are there to help when trouble comes. That's a little different. But it can kind of kind of make sense, right? This seems even just a little bit more clear. If I were to tell you what a brother is born for adversity means, well, it means when there's trouble, uh, the person who loves you, so like a brother, is there. Well, what do you know? It's right there. That's what the NIRV says. Okay, so I just think that's really cool how that works. Um, hopefully you think that's cool and hopefully that encourages you if you're ever stuck or you find somebody that you're talking to and they're stuck in their Bible and they're just like, I don't get it. You're like, well, let's pull out a different version. I actually have a Bible app on my phone and they have a really easy way to scroll through the different versions. So if you have a phone or a tablet, download that Bible app and there are so many translations. Um, they definitely have the NIV and the NIRV. So. We'll go over that one more time. A friend loves at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. Proverbs 17, 17. And if you do your memory verse, send me a video, FaceTime me, whatever. Um, if you see me around, let me know and you will get a treat. All right, time for prayer. Close this. And I don't have any prayer buddies today because we have... Uh, we have a, a bubble buddy. Somebody in our in our COVID bubble is over playing with our kiddos. So it's just me and I have a cat over here, but she's camera shy. All right. So, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for, I know I thanked you for this before, Lord, but I want to thank you again for all the different translations of your word that we can trust um, to point us towards you. Thank you for the many ways that we can read about you and your son's life and learn how to live like you. Thank you for making it easier for us. Thank you for providing beautiful words to encourage us. Just thank you for this whole amazing book and making sure that there are so many different ways to get it from you to our brains. Um, Lord, we pray that as the weather is cooling down and, um, you know, the fall allergies are happening and things like that, that people are staying healthy, that we have um, a very uh, healthy church, a healthy community. And Lord, I ask that uh, we all keep you in mind when we are acting and when we are making decisions um, for the future. I know this is a weird time, God. Oh, it's so weird and so uncomfortable sometimes and frustrating. So, Lord, I just ask that um, you help us find the beautiful things in this strange time. That you help us remember that you do everything on purpose. You are intentional in all that you do. And your intent is beauty and goodness. So, help us remember that and help us, like dig through the dirt to find that beauty. Um, we love you, God, and we pray this all in your son's name and more. Amen. Okay, so that's it. That's all I have for September. September is over. How cuckoo bananas is that? Next week it'll be October. What? And then it'll be November, and then it'll be December, and then it'll be a new year, and 2020 will be over. 
So let's give a round of applause for that. Have a good week. Are you serious? It's not revised? I said revised like a hundred times. Like 200 times on camera. Are you... Raiders. Raiders version. Well, that's embarrassing.